In this Resolve Insider Knowledge, I show you how to take log footage, transform it into something easy to work with to help you get it to where it needs to be. So here we have some ARRI Log C footage. It can be quite difficult to work with as it's so low in saturation and contrast. Operations such as keying can be quite difficult as the low saturation means there's very little difference between the color tones. Also, the lift gamma gain wheels don't quite work as expected as they're not scaled to work with log gamma footage. So let's transform this footage into something easier to work with. Looking around online, the common wisdom, at least amongst YouTube colorists selling far too many products, is to apply a LUT to the footage to transform it into Rec 709 and then grade on top of that. You'll now notice the lift gamma gain wheels work correctly as they're designed to work with video or Rec 709 gamma. One issue of using a LUT in this way is that it will clamp or clip data outside of the 0 to 1 range. So any corrections that push past these bounds in a node prior to the LUT cannot be undone in a node post the LUT. Once it's clipped, it's clipped. A better method to do this transform non-destructively is to use a color space transform OFX plugin. This plugin allows us to transform to and from a variety of different color spaces and gammas. So let's do the same transform as the LUT. For the input gamma we'll select ARRI log C and for the output gamma we'll select REC 709. First thing you'll notice is that the highlights appear to be clipping. This is because we're not using tone mapping so there's no roll off or shoulder in the highlights. Enabling luminance mapping now gives a smooth roll off into the highlights. But this introduces clamping or clipping just like the LUT. To prevent this we switch luminance mapping off but rest assured Resolve actually preserves all the data in the highlights even though it appears clipped. So now we can add a node post this transform and the lift gamma gain wheels work as expected. But what if we wanted to work underneath a film print emulation LUT that expects log footage as an input? Well that is the beauty of the color space transform node as it allows us to transform back into our original format non-destructively. So here we add another color space transform but this time our input is Rec 709 and our output is log C. Now if I bypass the entire node graph You'll notice no difference and it actually confirms that we're not clipping any data. So now that the lift gamma game wheels are working as expected, let's convert the color space to make keying easier. Returning to the first node, we select the color input as ARRI Alexa and the output as REC 709. Keying should now be a little bit easier. On the second color space transform node, we leave the color settings as is as we want the saturation to just pass through. Now we add our film print emulation LUT after our log C conversion. Correcting in between our color space transform nodes is just as easy as working with Rec 709. So now I'm going to show you another technique I use quite often. This time instead of converting to Rec 709, I'm going to convert into another flavor of log that's easier to work with. So this footage is from an FS700 shot in S log 2. So whilst S-Log2 is a great container for all of the dynamic range shot by the FS700, it's not the nicest version of log to grade. This is due to the slightly expanded highlights and the slightly compressed values in the shadows, which means the relationship between the shadows, mids and highs is different to that of a standard log gamma. So we add our color space transform node and select S-Log2 as our input. And for output, we're going to select a version of log that's easier to work with, and that is ARRI Log C. This now gives us a nicer starting point. And if we flick backwards and forwards between the ARRI Log C and the S Log 2, you'll see a smoother roll off into the highlights and less compressed or contrasty shadows. This is because Log C is closer to the standard Cineon log curve. So now we'll finish this grade by returning it to Rec 709. Selecting Log C as the input, Rec 709 as the output, and enabling luminance mapping as this is our final node. This time I'm converting the color space in our final node as I actually prefer to work in a wider color space. For the input color space, I select S Gamut and Rec 709 for the output. When transforming into a smaller color space, it's a good idea to enable saturation mapping. This scales out of gamut colors back into the smaller color space. Any corrections prior to this last node are in log space, so it's probably a good idea to work with the film style grading controls of offset, contrast, and pivot. More about these controls in an upcoming Insider Knowledge. So here is an issue you might encounter, particularly for formats that don't adhere to the standard Cineon log curve, or have been exposed to the right, or have had data levels interpreted as video legal. 
Transforming this S-Log2 footage into Rec. 709 results in values well and truly above where they should be. And while the Color Space Transform node preserves these values, the Lift Gamma Gain wheels won't work as expected because these values far exceed the Rec. 709 scaling they're designed to work with. The easiest way to resolve this is to use the contrast and pivot to uniformly scale the highlights back within range. Pivot is set to zero, so the image moves uniformly downwards with the contrast control. It's okay if the brightest highlights don't fully come into range. I want to put this image through a film print emulation LUT, so I'm going to add another color space transform to convert back into log. So Rec. 709 as the input, and Log C as my output, as it's my preferred log curve. And as like the previous shot, my color space conversion happens after my grade, as I like to work in a wider color gamut. We add the film print emulation LUT. And grade like normally with our lift gamma gain wheels between our two color space transform nodes. So that's it for this insider knowledge. If you found it useful, make sure you share it with someone who might do so as well.